Hey guys, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of the Service Without Excuses podcast. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you listen. We want to thank again our sponsor, Sotellus, sotellus.com forward slash Rob Line. It's R O B L Y O N. They sponsor the show. We really appreciate them having faith in this and uh, having the background to um, help promote this podcast as well. If you don't know what Sotellus is, it is a program that entails review management. So every week we get a consistent amount of people calling us saying, we're interested in booking your services. We're interested in hiring you and your company to do the work in, in your home. And uh, we read your reviews and we think they're outstanding. And price becomes less of a negotiation when they've seen these reviews of all these people, especially consistent new reviews. Um, it's always big to have new reviews, you know, a couple of days old, if, if at all possible. <clears throat> That's how the program really works well. So we want to thank them again for sponsoring it. And we love them. Use them in New Jersey's best to our own business. Um, so we, uh, we we can't say enough about them. I have an incredible guest today that I have been listening to for years. I actually sat down with you at Mike Fest many, many years ago. It was me, you, a guy named Al Branham. And we were just talking about a bunch of businesses. And I was more on the restoration side at the time than I was on that. But we did a lot of commercial carpet cleaning. And I found the information at that little sit down at a hotel in Nashville was just so informative and, and gave a ton of information. And there is no one, and I mean no one I can think about more, that has a bigger impact and more experience when it comes to commercial carpet cleaning, and in particular encapsulation, but all forms of carpet cleaning when it comes to uh, carpets than the gentleman I have heard today. Mr. Rick Jolinas, how are you, sir? Great. Nice to be with you, Rob. Thank you for having me on your program. I really appreciate it. Rick has a company called Excellent Supply just outside of the St. Petersburg, Tampa area, which is in my opinion, one of the nicest parts of the United States. I love it there. Um, and uh, he has a business and he's been in the capsulation since pretty much day one when it came in. So I'm going to ask Rick if he can describe to our listeners a little bit more about what exactly encapsulation is. I'd like to say everybody here knows what it is and does it, but there's people from all different realms. There's people in different industries that listen to this that may want to know more about it. So if you can give us just a little bit of history on it and, and how we've gotten to where we are today. Okay. Well, the history, uh, I'll start a little bit with, with my history. I, I started uh, a cleaning business back in the early 80s. And in the uh, early 80s, you know, I really started into commercial carpet cleaning around 83, started a janitorial business in 82, kind of kicked in a carpet cleaning commercial side on in 83. And really my focus was commercial all throughout all my years in the cleaning business. Uh, we dabbled on residential a little bit, but I just, it wasn't for my heart, you know, it wasn't what I was into. So stuck primarily on the commercial side and that's worked out really well. Um, now going back to where we were back in the early years before the internet, uh, back when the only source of information you had was your supplier and clean facts magazine and, uh, your IICRC instructor. And so from those early sources, I kept kind of running into a brick wall. We were doing a lot of commercial glue down carpets and we'd get wicking and recurring spills that would come back repeatedly. And it was very frustrating, you know, and I, and I was trying to build a system that was duplicatable that, that you know, I could send texts out and they weren't gonna have problems. The problem came in, <laughs> we would send them out, you know, and, and it would work well on one account. And, and then whatever system we put together would, fail or would run into problems on a different account. And that's not the way to run a business, in my opinion. You, you need something that's turnkey that gives consistent results every time. So again, like I said, I kept going back to the industry and I'd ask questions. I'd say, well, what, what can I do? And they said, well, well, here, have you tried this machine? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I'll try it. So I tried that machine and that didn't work. And then they said, well, well have you tried this chemical? Have you tried? So, so through the years, we tried hot water extraction, we tried shampooing with extraction, we tried RX20, we tried host, we tried Von Schrader, we tried bonnet cleaning, we tried uh, variables of different things mixed together. Finally, it, as the end of the 90s was kind of progressing, we came upon the Chemstractor machine. Now, for those that might not be aware of the Chemstractor, because it's not really around anymore, but it was a rotary machine that had a, a disc or a ring around it. And, and you used shampoo and also put the foamer in the tank. And what you do is you'd shampoo the carpet and that, that vacuum ring around the perimeter would suck the solution into the vacuum tank. So it was a low moisture method, basically shampooing. 
So that worked pretty well. That was giving me better results than I had gotten with some other things that we had tried. So I thought I was on to something there. And then, then I came up with the idea, well, what I think I'll do, I'm going to try to build like a monster chem extractor machine. And I knew the Cymex, been around since, the, since like 1933, was the, just the bomb when it came to uh, doing uh, scrubbing, you know, because of its planetary design. You've got uh, a drive platform that spins in one direction and then three brushes spin the opposite direction. So it's actually scrubbing left and right simultaneously. So I, I thought, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a Cymex and I'll, and I'll put a vacuum ring on it and I'll make like the, <laughs> the monster chem extractor machine out of it. So right about that time that I started playing with the Cymex machine and, and I was about to, to try to design that, um, I became aware of, of Crystal Dry. And, and at that point, Whitaker had been kind of flying under the radar and they had this crystallizing detergent uh, DuPont had just come out with a, a product too called Resistec. So these two companies are out there and th these are what I would consider to be the, 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 the very beginning of what we think of encapsulation today. So I took some crystal dry and I started playing with it. About that time I was involved with the LMCCA as a founding member of the Low Moisture Carpet Cleaners Association. We went to Georgia, we we're talking to the folks there and uh, we, we were you know, I, I was presenting to them the chem extractor idea and, and talking to them about uh, the crystal dry and they, they, they were on board with that. We were at uh, Tandis Carpet at that time. So long story short, I started to see, well, the, the benefit here is on the encapsulation side. And uh, by the way, at that point, nobody had used that word yet to describe it. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine, his name's Don Forbes. He's been in the industry about the same amount of time as me. And Don's a real geek. I mean, he, he geeks out over anything. You know, he's a super technical guy. So we were talking one time about this and, and he referred to it as, well, it, it's like it's encapsulating the soil. And I was like, yeah, that is what it is. It's, it's encapsulating. So I started to use that word. And as you know, in the industry now, that's, that's not just a, a word that's associated with release it product, uh, our product, which we went on to, to, to develop. But uh, uh, it's industry-wide. So I wish I had a trademark that name. I could have made more money than, than what I'm doing now. But at any rate, that's where it started. And, and what we found as we started to take encapsulation into those accounts that were, were giving us trouble before, we found that we were getting really amazing success. What I mean by that is, for example, one, one group of stores that we were servicing at the time was Victoria's Secret stores. We had all the Victoria's Secret stores in West Central Florida. And at that time, back then, they had like this bright, bright, hot pink carpet in all their stores. And they were, most of the stores were done quarterly. Some of them were done once a month, depending on the volume traffic of the store. And we would find that when, when they would remodel a store and they have brand new bright pink carpet, whenever you have a privilege to clean brand new fresh carpet, it's the easiest thing in the world to clean. So we'd go in there, we'd clean it. It was easy. Next time was easy. Next time was easy. Next time was easy. Six months later, a year later, two years later, we were pushing the boulder up the hill. It was it was a struggle to get those carpets clean. We're and again, we're trying everything, all kinds of chemicals, all kinds of techniques, lots of recurring spill stains. But what we found when we began using good encapsulation chemistry on those carpets, what happened was the uh, the 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 stores that had kind of slid to the bottom of the valley, the ones that were already uglied out, that were grayish looking and dingy looking, rapidly with the, within a couple of cleanings began to go uphill. And to the point that they became very much like the brand new stores. And, and naturally they were uh, remodeling stores. So, so I could see a brand new store here and a store that was three years old here. And both the carpets were in exactly the same condition. And that's not how it had been. We, we, were, we were killing ourselves to try to take these these dogged out carpets and get them to, to be maintainable using traditional chemistry. Once we started doing encapsulation, these carpets stayed vibrant looking, just beautiful. That's when I realized this is something that's, that's really special. And of course the industry too caught on and, and, and it's grown in the industry. So, so that's just kind of a, a little overview, a little history of, of where it all came from and, and how we were involved with it. What's really cool about encapsulation, and I the first time I used it, a hot water extraction guy all my life, worked for franchises, they only knew hot water extraction. So first time I tried it was, believe it or not, in a college dorm, Lafayette University, I remember. 
and I got your product and I took it down in these hallways where they said, listen, we can't, we can't have hoses running out of the building. We can't have hoses running through the air. We don't want a hot water extract. We have our own equipment. We got to find a different way. And I had bought a Cymex. I believe it was actually from you. And I had bought uh, the products and uh, I says, all right, well, <laughs> I hope I can do a good job here with this. And I was amazed you put this, made the solution up, put it in the Cymex and, and wow. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and in fact, the guy came up and said, I have never seen these floors look anything like this. It was remarkable. It was all low pile. They had done some maintenance, obviously, on it by hot water extracting it periodically. Um, so I wasn't too worried about the soil load wasn't too heavy, but the encapsulating surrounding the, the soil on those carpets uh, did a remarkable job, better than I ever could have done steam cleaning these or hot water extracting these carpets. Uh, going into that, what do you feel the state of it is today? You know, obviously, we've had some challenges coming out of uh, you know, the COVID uh, here in 2020 and into parts of 2021 and things are starting to get back to normal. I'm getting a lot more calls personal. My business, my colleagues are getting more calls um, to do commercial carpet cleaning. Now they've been more focused on the sanitizing aspect up to right now or disinfecting aspect of it. But now their floors are starting to look really, really bad. They haven't done anything in probably a year and a half when they're used to doing something a little bit more consistently. How do you think the state of our business coming out of this is right now? That's a good question, Rob. Um, personally speaking, from my experience cleaning carpets for over 20 years in my personal business, and in the last, since around 2000, another 20 years, roughly, so we're 40 years into this, uh, the last 20 years on the supply side, from my personal experience, and now as we deal with carpet cleaners all day long on the phone, you know, commercial carpet cleaners, that's kind of where we come from. And everything I've seen, Everything that I'm seeing is that we've kind of gone around the corner. Yeah, it was rough at the beginning when everything shut down at the beginning of COVID one year ago, but right now it's blowing up. And what we're seeing in our business is unprecedented um, new customers. There's a lot of new guys coming into the industry that are excited about uh, getting on board with us. And it's really, uh, I don't see anything negative. And that, that brings up a, a, an interesting point. Being that I've been in this industry for a lot of years, um, you know, I I remember when the World Trade Center went down. I I remember when the mortgage meltdown happened in 2008 or whatever. All of the different crises that have have come about, we've seen so many bumps in the road. But the, the cool thing about this particular industry, the commercial carpet cleaning industry, is that it seems to be pretty resilient. It, it's it's basically bomb proof. It keeps going. It, it sure dives. It, it, it dips some. It goes down, but it bounces right back up again. It's, it's funny. Back in 2008, 2009 era, when you know everybody looked like it was the, the end of the world uh, with the economy, and everybody was concerned. We we developed a product called NCAP Basic, which was a kind of a, a bare bones version of our NCAP product. Uh, it still works well, but we took out some of the more costly ingredients so that we could come out with a price point product so that if you just had to sharpen your pencil, you could use it. And uh, we thought, well, that was gonna be a home run. And it, it is a great product and we do still sell it, but uh, people don't mind the fact, because the, the thing that's cool about uh, a good NCAP product is that your cost of use is like about three tenths of a cent per square foot. So three tenths of a penny per square foot. So if you're charging 20 cents a square foot, it's it's a negligible cost that doesn't even exist really in the big picture, especially when you consider the performance. When you're cleaning at two to three thousand square feet per hour, um, if you're cleaning at two to three thousand square feet per hour, or round that out to 2,500 square feet down the middle, and you're charging 20 cents a square foot, you quickly see what kind of money you're making. This is this is a, a cash generator. And, and the, the great thing about it is that if you, if you do it intelligently, smartly, you can set it up where you've got guys out there working at night while you're home with your family. And uh, it's, it's just a, it's a cash machine. That's <laughs> what it is. And, and that's why so many people are really loving this side of it. And, and as I say, it, it does seem to be resilient to these fluctuations in the economy and the crazy things that happen in the world. This industry continues to drive forward. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's proven over time that it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good market to be in. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, 
I think you just mentioned before a lot of new guys getting in, people that maybe have lost their jobs or made a change or just say, you know, I'm going to cash in a 401k. I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. And it's a great way to do it. I used to have, and and something that you just said, I'll also come back to here in one second, but um, I used to have uh, commercial accounts set up for pretty much Saturdays. I had one or two weeknights. I often went to do them myself because I almost enjoyed it. It was like almost therapeutic to take the machine, spray the solution, whatever whatever method you were using for encapsulation, whatever system you were using. Um, it was peaceful to get this job done. It was kind of quiet. The machinery is not loud. There's no volume problems. If you still have people working in the facility while you're there, um, it's, it's, it's like you just said, negligible. The biggest expense in it is labor generally because um, that's the way pretty much any service business is. Here's the thing, your profit center being three-tenths of a penny per square foot is immense. We're talking a couple hundred to one return uh, when it really comes down to it. it. It's a tremendous benefit to be able to do it. And it's not complex. It's not, you don't have to have, I have a $50,000 truck man out there. That's beautiful. That's awesome. It's absolutely irrelevant. What is relevant is the results that your customers are getting. So I think it's a good thing that these people are going to be able to develop and grow and build it with a little bit of a you know learning curve up front and having great products. Great chemistry is it. Um, we try to pride ourselves here at New Jersey's Best using the better products. And release it, I consider to be one of those better products because you can tell it's better formulated. It has a better effect. And at the end of the day, the person calls me up and says, wow, they look great. That's the only thing that matters in the end, not, you know, hey, this is great. As long as we're turning a profit and they're happy, I know I have a residual form of business, like you just said before, on the back end. What do you think with some of these, especially newer people, but let's just say even the old veterans like ourselves, what are some good marketing ideas? I was looking at some of the stuff on your website. It was great step-by-step -step, um, little videos of how you should do this and how to market this and into farming and different things. Farming came from obviously the real estate market, but what are some suggestions you can give to market now? I think with this slingshot effect that everything's been pulled way back and now it's starting to be let go. You know, they might be pebbles or little rocks. They're not boulders at this point in time, but they're being pulled back. And people are now excited that there's going to be an opportunity there coming into the time of the year where they can do it. People are coming out of spring, heavy pollen um, season this year up in the Northeast. I don't know where it's the rest of the country, but here it's been horrific, the worst I've ever seen. So there's a lot of things going on environmentally, not just from a virus standpoint or germ standpoint. Um, what do you think are some of the best marketing ways that they can do coming into this year? Well, I think that what I found through the years that's worked is to be consistent in your approach to reaching out to people. Um, if you think that you're just going to throw up a website and the world's going to just find you, that's wishful thinking. Yes, you should have a website, obviously a good website that's geared towards commercial. One thing that I really want to encourage you, if you're going to try to be um, have any footprint in commercial work, is to brand yourself that way. Um, it's true that there are a lot of people that do residential carpet cleaning. What I found is that when I was actively selling commercial carpet cleaning, when I would approach someone and explain to them that uh, we just do commercial work, that that's, that's our angle and we're good at it. We're specialists at it. The way that we're going to approach your building, the way that we're going to bill you, the way that we're going to work around your schedule, everything is it's geared and tailored for commercial. So that has a lot of uh, weight in, in the minds of people that this is a commercial company. Now, as they look at the, at the landscape, it's, these are all residential carpet cleaners that also do commercial. Even if you are a residential carpet cleaner, I've suggested this to guys and many, many people have taken me up on this suggestion, but I really think it's a good idea to try to differentiate this segment of your business, even set up a new DBA or, you know, a new branding structure for commercial so that you can sell that angle to your customers that this is specific. This is just commercial. Uh, in our business, like I say, I, I did dabble on residential for a short time. I hated it because you know, we would go to work and it, I was never a huge company. There was only like, you know, we only had like three trucks at the max. Uh, so we weren't huge, but we were all just running it and the numbers were good. It was very profitable. But for me, when I was getting into residential, because I was just, it was a new en entity. So I was doing the residential in the daytime and I hated it. And we got there and even though it's charging much more per square feet, 
uh, per hour, you know, the, the per hour co- uh, profit was terrible because by the time I drove in daytime traffic and went and prepped the carpet and petted the dog and did all the polite things that you need to do in a residential setting, I found that at the end, I wasn't making nearly the kind of profit that I was on commercial. So I just, I kicked it to the curb and stuck with commercial. But I think that if you can brand yourself commercial and focus on that, so build a website, build branding around it, your marketing material, flyers, and then get out there and get in front of people. Now, what you want to do is just talk to people, Um, drop off your your flyer, uh, make a presentation. Ideally, what you want to do is a demo for them. So ask them, just say, look, can I just clean a small section of your carpet for free so that you can see what we're capable of? Keep it low pressure. Also do a carpet inspection. If if there's any way that they'll let you do a carpet inspection, it really carries a lot of weight. Um, So simply inspecting the carpet, looking at the condition of the carpet and asking some questions. Um, We had a form that we used that had like about a dozen or 15 questions, you know, the condition of the vacuum cleaner, inspect the vacuums that are used. How often is the vacuum done? What's the condition of the walk-off mats? What's the parking lot like? When's the last time it was cleaned? What method was used? What spot cleaners are being used? There's a lot of questions you can ask. And that helps you understand where they are and what their needs are. But it also positions you as an expert that cares about them. And that, that has a lot of weight. I, I always use the illustration on this point of being like a doctor. If you went into a doctor and you just uh, wanted to go to the doctor because you're not feeling well and he just you walk in the door and he writes your prescription. It's he said, well, you didn't even ask me, you know, what, what, what's wrong? How do you feel? I take my temperature, my blood pressure. He, he does all of that. He gets a, a full evaluation and then he writes a prescription. Right, right. And in fact, it could be the same prescription he's writing all day because it's flu season. I don't know. But <laughs> the, the point is, is that by, by being the, the expert, by being the doctor and asking those kinds of questions, it, it differentiates you. And everything that you can do to differentiate yourself from everybody else sets you apart and then continue to follow up on those people. And here's why I say that commercial entities, businesses, you might say, well, I'm going to go in there today. I'm going to talk to them about their carpet cleaning and I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to get that account. I want that account. Great. But what is the probability that today you walk in there today and today they were just thinking, you know what, we got to talk about somebody, get, get somebody in there to do these carpets. Never. That, that's not likely going to happen. So by staying in front of them one day and hopefully one day soon, it will be the day. And, and they're going to think, well, that helpful guy that was so full of good information and gave us some nice advice and some su- suggestions at no charge offered to do a free demo. That's when it's going to connect and you're going to get the account. So it's worth doing. Now, the reason why you want to fill your pipeline like that is this. Take a look in your community. Look around your community. Look at the buildings in your community. Look at the businesses in your community. Scope out in your mind what you'd like to take. And you think to yourself, well, that's great. Now now you have a list of potential possible customers. Here's the point. Somebody's taking care of that carpet that somebody might as well be you. And if you can continue to show them that you are the expert, then someday that will be you is the point. So look at the, at, at building yourself a, a, a list of ones that you wanna to continue to, to work on and, and try to encourage to, to become your customer and, and drop some off of eventually if you see that they're just duds you know, I've put in some new ones in place of it. But I found that cycling through a list and and being a friendly helper and advisor really does a a great job of landing you accounts. And then as you build accounts, commercial accounts, then you can kind of leverage, you know, when you're in a, 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 for instance, a business community, you you can, you know, get referrals and we clean your neighbor and, and things like that. So there's a lot you can do once you get that ball rolling. But that to me has been the best way, dress professionally, go in and talk to them, be professional, offer a demo, carpet inspection. And uh, when you put all those components together that I just laid out, that will help you to become uh, you know, really successful in the commercial venue. You know, the key is in the consistency. I wrote it in my book, my first book, and, and you brought it up to one of your, one of your uh, episodes, talked about going into a facility and speaking to somebody at the counter over and over. And I believe you said it was about a half a dozen times before they finally said, I give. Yeah. And then it ended up being a good, a good content. It is consistency. It is being uh, regularly in touch with people. Um, and, and a lot of your local base, if you are a residential carpet cleaner, a lot of your base works somewhere, you know, and, and, and it's very simple to just 
let them know, you know, we do commercial as well. Maybe your facility would want it done. Just something that simple. And well, you know what? I, my, my friend is in charge of uh, purchases and I'll, I'll give her your information, your card and say they should call because our carpets look terrible. Whatever that happens to be, every opportunity out there is something you should explore. Now, one of the things I want to talk about personally is the CMS program, the commercial marketing uh, program. That is the best to this day commercial marketing suite program I have ever seen. And it's easy. It's easy to take the examples and put your own stuff into it and promote it. I can't tell you how many times I've used that program, but it's oh. in the hundreds. I know <laughs> that that have been sent out to places. And it's a it's a real blueprint. It's a simple, easy blueprint to to build your business. But I want to get more into your products. So obviously, I'm a big fan of the encapsulating products. And you can definitely tell a subpar product versus something good because of the result at the end of the day. Um, I've tried them all. I've tried products that people promised me the world, they were the best thing since sliced bread and they were not. And I've had to learn that lesson the hard way. And you end up right back to where you you, you start. You know, if you, you test something again, people try to market to you and whatever, but if it works, don't, don't, don't mess with it. If it's working, keep at it. And one of the things I've really saw was the excellent supplier release a line of products have been uh, spectacular. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about what you've been doing for the last 20 years with Release It and Excellent Supply and of course, some of the other things that encompass within it? Okay, yeah. Um, what we did early on, again, I mentioned that I looked at something DuPont had. They, they had a fluorochemical based product. It, was not, uh, it wasn't a polymer based product. And I, I looked closely at what Whitaker was doing. They had a polymer based product. And I kind of went down the middle. I went with a polymer-based product with a fluorochemical as well. So what's the point of a fluorochemical? That's like, like Teflon type stuff, you know, like that, that's what fluorochemical is. The reason for a fluorochemical is that fluorochemicals lower the surface tension. So if you think about like a frying pan that's got a Teflon coating, the egg slides off the pan. The reason why is the, the surface tension of the pan is lower than the egg. So it slides off. Same thing happens when you put fluorochemicals anywhere. So for example, you could take a, a, a water bead on your car, you know, the wax holds uh, your, your, your uh, you know, car polish causes the water to beat up. If you took a, a drop of fluorochemical onto that water bead, it would go just flatten right out because it would lower the surface tension of the water. Well, lowering the surface tension of the water is what detergents do. Detergents lower surface tension. That's how they work. So if we can combine the, those two technologies together, the detergent technology with fluorochemical, we're going to lower the surface tension exponentially, which is going to make the detergent work more efficiently. In addition, by lowering the surface tension, we also help to slow the wicking process down. So that's one of the reasons why it's one of our little tricks that helps release it to, to retard wicking and, and, and slow wicking down. It also adds a, a level of soil resistance. Although it's not a full-blown protector, it's gonna add a little bit of soil resistance. And finally, it helps to get the, the polymer to release from the carpet more easily as well. So those are the, the key reasons. So that's on the floor chemical side. Now on the polymer side, what we did there is we, we were careful in what we went with when we worked with our chemists to get a, a polymer package that would work extremely well. And what we've got is, a, is not just a very good polymer, but we've got a lot of polymer in our products. And that's, that's really a factor. And you can, you can see this yourself if you take release it um, and, and just dry a little bit of it in a saucer, you're gonna find as it dries, it dries brittle and breaks away from the dish and it's very crumbly, not sticky. Um, but, but the point of the polymer is that the polymer will actually attract soil and hold it in suspension. That becomes the vehicle to get the soil out of the carpet. So then during the post vacuuming process, we can vacuum that uh, encapsulated soil that was now in that fluid out of the carpet and because it's brittle and not sticky, it's not going to attract soil, actually resist soil. Going back to that example I gave earlier about those stores we were servicing that look brighter and brighter and brighter, that's the reason why, because it was actually resisting soil, keeping the carpets cleaner longer between cleanings. So the, the point of the polymer is very important that, that the, the polymer that we have actually likes oil. It's, it has an attraction to oil, so it'll pull oil from the environment. So it, it'll hold it in the, into the solution. Now keep in mind, carpet fiber is flexible. So as the fiber flexes, you get some a, a brittle polymer, polymeric fluid. As that fluid, as a, as a fiber flexes, that, that polymer is gonna break away. It's gonna shear away from the fiber. 
So during the normal course of walking on the carpet and, and daily vacuuming, you're going to continue to vacuum the, the uh, soil out of the carpet. Now we do get a question sometimes, well, if we kept end capping and end capping and end capping, like putting coats of wax on a floor, are we just going to load it up and it's going to be fully loaded with end cap and it will never get it out of the carpet. It's interesting about release, it's polymer. The polymer that we have, it, and you can try this in a dish, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you dry a little bit of it in a saucer, you'll see that it breaks up when it's dry. Now, if you take it, just a few drops of water and, and put it in there and smear it around, you'll find that it'll go back to a liquid again. And then when that dries, it will crystallize all over again. The point is that it will resolubilize. It will turn back to a liquid. So there's no way that we can, it's not like we're putting down coat after coat. Every time we get it wet, it turns back to a liquid, dries and crystallizes. So we're not gonna load up in the carpet. So these are some of the advantages that come. And so those are the things that we worked on early on with trying to get all those components to work well. And what, what I did is I worked with a really smart company that could help us design those. Because again, my background is from cleaning, but I knew what I wanted. And so I tested and tested and tested. I think probably the hardest product that we came out with with testing was NCAP Punch. That was our pre-spray product. And so what we did is we took a existing formulation that worked well for pre-spray and then tried to merge that with encapsulation and it was a train wreck. It was, <laughs> we had basically Smucker's jelly. It's, it's very hard to get solvency, heavy duty solvent type stuff that you'd have in a pre-spray, traditional pre-spray and get that to balance on the other side with, with polymer. And I kept rejecting, rejecting, and rejecting what each sample that they gave me until we found something that really balanced well. It was a lot of work. That was the hardest product I would say that we developed. NCAP Hydrox was another sort of a oddity. Um, nobody was really had a um, hydrogen peroxide product yet in the industry for encapsulation. So what we ended up doing is I actually took the uh, the, the the basis for that was a hydrogen peroxide green, a green certified hydrogen peroxide, very strong hydrogen peroxide detergent that was used for multi-purpose cleaning, all-purpose cleaning, floor cleaning, all sorts of things. And I spoke to our chemist and I said, is there anything in this formulation that would be problematic going over to the soft surface, like for carpet? And he, he, he confirmed that there were no ingredients there that would be, you know, detrimental to carpet. I said, all right, let's start exploring moving over, moving that over to encapsulation. And again, you know, it's funny because when I would ask these questions or like when we wanted to make a spot cleaner an NCAP spot cleaner, again, the, you get this kind of pushback or when we even when we were going to do the pre-spray and you know, the, the, the chemist's like, oh, I don't know. And I say, no, I, I really want this. So let's do it. So that as far as Hydrox goes, what we did with NCAP Hydrox was we took that formulation and what we ended up with was a very, very high potency hydrogen peroxide but to keep hydrogen peroxide stable, it, 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 it tends to want to be in an acidic environment. You put it in an alkaline environment and it kills the hydrogen peroxide effectiveness. There's another factor. You take hydrogen peroxide, a very strong amount of hydrogen peroxide and throw it up against polymer and you're going to kill the polymer. It's going to blow the polymer to bits. Hydrogen peroxide is a very volatile environment. So how do you get these elements to work? How do you get a detergent to work get some, some detergency, get some hydrogen peroxide at a very high level and get polymers to work. Well, what we ended up with was something on the, very much on the acid side, down in the 3.5 range in concentrated, extremely acidic and a very strong hydrogen peroxide. But the key was we found a, hydro, a hydrogen peroxide stable polymer that could handle that environment that, that would encapsulate and dry brittle, just like all of our other products. We merged that together and came up with NCAP Hydrox, which is our second most popular product today. It's an amazing very, product, product, by the way. Amazing product. So, so that's kind of some of the stuff that went into it. It was a lot of trial and just testing and trying to push to develop things that, that I thought were necessary, that were beneficial to our industry. That's, that's I mean, it's... We appreciate it as, as cleaners out there, because again, the product's better. It just makes the whole train, the, the entire process much better. It makes our clients happy, makes our techs happy because they're out there getting the results and they're not worried about, you know, hey, it's not coming out that well, uh, <laughs> which is something we dealt with a lot with hot water extraction. Now, we are primarily a residential business. We just happen to do commercial carpet cleaning. But as I, I tell, you know, I just looked at a... Uh, Believe it or not, it's a storage unit that has carpet throughout the entire hallways, these massively long hallways, and it's all commercial glue down carpet. 
and um, vice versa. I know if I steam clean this, I'm actually going to probably open Pandora's box up when I when I deal with it. Um, they don't have a ton of soil over. They have a lot of spotting, and I know these spots where they're coming from are going to be an issue. So immediately I bid it as a as an end cap job. Another example, real quick, is I have a. It's a, a retirement community building. It's got four stories, actually five stories, and they do not want they we can we have to steam clean the tiling grout. We do steam clean that. We have a, a high end portable. We go up to the hallways and do it, and then we have our uh, truck mount system when we do the lower level floors, and that comes out really good. But we cannot add water. We cannot have any water coming from the carpet to the tiled areas because, as you know water on a tile and grout surface and a carpet surface and, and somebody that's older in nature, it's a recipe for disaster. No matter how many signs I put down, no matter how much tape we put down, no matter how proactive we are at walking Mrs. Smith arm in arm across there to the elevator, we're asking for it. So the, the facility said, please, no moisture when it comes to that or low moisture where we can dry it very quickly and it's good. So that we've been doing successfully for three years. They continue to have us back twice a year, sometimes three times a year, depending on activity, and we end cap it every single time. And they don't want, I got to the point that they don't even want to be, think about hot water extraction unless we're doing the hard surfaces and tile and grout. We have no no choice. But even that, I said, you when you have some maintenance on the tile and grout, the CRB machine does an amazing job in a small extractor. So there are so many flexibilities to do it. But the thing is, with your business, if you were even a primarily residential and you're going to go into commercial carpet cleaning, Use different tools, like in the toolbox or tool chest, which I have over here, I have a different hammer. One hammer can knock out a wall, one hammer can finish up the, the molding, okay? You have to have different tools in order to do it. And one of the things that's really good about Excellent Supply and Rick's business, in my opinion, is it's specific to the commercial industry. They're not trying to be all things to everybody. So the advice you hear from Rick and what you see in the, in the, in the programs and the equipment that they have um, make a huge difference. It's like adding another tool to the toolbox. It doesn't have to be just one sided, you know, make yourself versatile. Your customers will be way more impressed that you have not only the uh, equipment, but the, the head knowledge, the technical knowledge to be able to back it up. Rick, how can our listeners find out a little bit more about you and your company? I'm obviously going to put it in the show notes, some equipment, and I'm big endorser of, of Rick and Excellent Supply. Not only just that, your customer service is incredible. It's always been every time I call, every time I email, it doesn't matter. Everybody's pleasant, which is like Chick-fil-A for the commercial cleaning um, industry. So uh, how can our listeners find out a little bit more about you, sir? Well, our, it, it's easy to remember the name. It's excellentsupply.com. So excellentsupply.com. You can find us there. It's interesting as you were talking there, you, it, because I've been a carpet cleaner for so many years, it's, it's in my blood. So I understand the pain. And it's, it's out of that that this grew. I understand the pain of dealing with this and I understand I've been in your shoes, you know? And, and so I, everything we've built is built for the commercial side of things. And it's true what you said, we're, we're not trying to be Walmart, super Walmart. You know, we don't have everything. We, we stuck on a niche that, that, that we know well, and that's what we've put together. Everything we put there would be products that we know work well. We're not gonna put in a product that wouldn't be on my truck if I was going to go clean commercial carpet. So that's that's really the focal point. So we want to try to help you. Our, our, our little slogan at our, our business is to max your end cap. And that's what we want to help you do is to max your end cap, to help you be as successful in your commercial business as you can be. And everybody at our business, and, and that's what we're, we're kind of wrap our head around is to help you be successful in that respect. One of the things that I that I spent 17 years working with franchises, I worked for Stanley Steamer for 10 years between truck technician to running multi-million dollar year companies and serve pro as a restoration company. And this truly is, in my opinion, for this sector, dealing with Rick and his company is like dealing with the franchise of commercial cleaning, commercial carpet cleaning, not commercial cleaning, let me rephrase that, commercial carpet cleaning, some commercial floor cleaning, having a good resource and the technical knowledge and the the generosity that they give um, again, I'm not big on testimonials and say when I, when I do these podcasts, but I can vouch for Rick and his company and I definitely would, uh, would give it a shot. And if you haven't already uh, talked to them, uh, do yourself a favor and give them a call or email them or go visit the website and go from there. So Rick, thank you so much for your time today, sir. I really appreciate you being here. It's truly an honor and I appreciate it very much. Well, thank you for having me, Rob. And, and right back at you, people that are watching this program are obviously they've got their heads into the business or dialed in. And so it's it's reciprocal so it's it's really a privilege to be with you thank you you got it sir have a great day
you too